Mr. Guttenberg, hello. Yeah, listen. No, listen. I, I understand, but you need to talk to Anthony about that. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't. Oh, man. Hey, who is throwing stuff around here? Come on! Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, OK? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean... How the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, Father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him, then an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Oh, the bell. I don't believe this place. I will answer now. The rest will have to wait. First, Zachary's sudden death is a great tragedy, but also a great inconvenience, as it happened just now. I'm dealing with the situation in a discreet and efficient way, and I expect your cooperation in all related matters. Secondly, the arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. No one can know that I am still alive. I expect you all to act your part. Last, as you all know, I have a lot on my plate and need to focus on sorting everything out, so please do not disturb me with your petty concerns. You are all adults, and as part of the elite, you will eventually have to deal with difficult situations like this. It comes late for most of you, but this is a chance for you to show what you are made of. That will be all. What next? Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer? You have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. No need to panic.
How are you today, sir? Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and Cone. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account HTC Depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Ah. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? No, what? what the hell is that? This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. This is Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to mid midnight last night. Did the portrait photographer check out? You verified his identity? Everything's in order. Sorry, sir, you don't appear on my list, so you need to go. Sir, you're not authorized to be here. Mike One, Tango is standing down. Thank you, sir. Stay clear now. Hello there, sir. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Look at me getting all giddy. It's like musical. In need of another drink, are we, Mother?
A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Travel documents. I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. Hello, sir. Sorry, no private eyes here, Mr. Falcone. Bye-bye. citizen. Target is lost. I repeat, target is lost. Uh
the office safe is hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering it. It's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah, it's impressive. They've all right. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Hello, this is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex-wife. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it again. He needs to believe that Alexa has come back from the dead, and that he has to write the eulogy for some make-believe funeral event. I still have a restraining order on him, so whoever gets this message now that Alexa is dead, better get him under control. Otherwise, I can no other way than to get the police to be on. Greetings, sir. Rosamund Rich, or Belinda Braveheart. Ah, I like that last one. Madam Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. Come on! 
Checking out some strange noises. Stand by. Come on, give me a break. Hey! Oh. Uh. Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard, trophy room, and the office safe is hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering it. It's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah. So... Impressive, all right. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. The blood? No, not that I saw. All I can think about is those swollen eyes. Someone's throwing things here. Moving in to investigate. Out.
Looking good, man. Looking good. Security detail at a stage zero. to my mother, the living dead. You must have been in some incredibly dangerous situations right now. I should let so you I... back to... Yeah, hey, bro.
This will be good. I need to stop thinking about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. What is it? Elaine says she saw her on the top floor, stroking the door to Alexa's office. I kid you not. She can't wait to get her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But why is safe with Ethel? She never misses a step, gossiping and work both. A headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? And then this big funeral. Thing. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers uh, outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Too right she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Fake funeral tomorrow. Zachary found getting up the stairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought. I can't do that. I remember how it was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Mary is so upset, as she's never seen a dead body before. Poor thing. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? Oh, I feel weak in my knees from all the tension here. We will all need a vacation when this is over. Ah, oh. hi there, sir. did when she arrived. Tell me. She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she prefers it. It's so on the bed. She's just a But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. 
Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Stop. Oh, hi, Martin. Rebecca here. I need you to dig up the contract we have with the law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. No, I think they revoked the unanimous vote on prolonging the lease for the New York branch. I know they can't do that. That's why I need the contract. In Sydney? Why wasn't I told? I'll get right on it. Do you have his number? I'm ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Here, where are your clothes? Oh, my God, you're dead. Oh, God, help! Please help me. Maybe it's hey. time to wake up. I need you to keep your head down. Hey, what's the situation here? Did you do this? Fucking look at me when I'm talking to you. What's his problem? Hold oh, on, oh. Fuck, don't. <laughs> What's going on? I know what's causing this commotion. Go! Go!
I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Butler, Mr. Fernsby killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlyle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. 
You can have it. You earned it. The file you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. How are you, sir? Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Forty-seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! Away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? 
Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. <laughs>